and welcome to A Millennial Musician, where we talk about what it's like to be a millennial musician today. And today we have our first solo podcast with myself, your host, Julian Loida. I was thinking about what I wanted the first solo podcast to be about. Of course, you think, oh, why did you start this podcast? Who are you? Why are you? All those types of things. Um, but I wanted to do something a bit more relevant. And so I was thinking about maybe holiday music, what it's like to play holiday music as a musician. But that kind of time is quickly passed here, though many musicians are still in kind of a holiday mode. Um, I'm recording here on December 27th, 2022. But the thing that kept hitting me and felt most relevant to me, and I imagine to all of you, is this topic, um, which I kind of break down to rest, relax, and revive. I think many musicians had an incredibly busy fall and not even just with gigs or teaching or whatever the kind of traditional things are but just life i think we saw a full kind of coming back with covid it felt like truly pre-covid times where you were just swamped with stuff inundated things that you had built up to be sort of helpful for the pandemic times and the flux of pandemic were really pressed with a lot more performance opportunities teaching opportunities, the whole terrain has changed. Many people may have left, and if you stayed around, maybe those opportunities came to you. A lot of people changing jobs, many people leaving, retiring, positions being filled, positions being open and trying to get those positions, or them just trying to fill in with people. I know all of these things came towards me and the people around me. So that led to an extremely busy fall. And it was, in retrospect, for me, very fun, very exciting, but truly stressful in a deep, deep way. And I, I'll talk more about kind of some of the performance things, but really all I'm interested in talking about right now is just how much that it is when, even if you're playing with an orchestra, you know, one week, if you're trained in that, it's, it's something you take super seriously. Those groups, I think, are very serious, for better or worse, and they just take a lot of focus um, even if you're just playing like quarter of notes, not always, but many of the groups, that is the case. And then you're talking about chamber stuff, improvisational, learning written music, learning improvisational music, learning music you already know, but you're trying to play better or it's with a new group, a new conductor. There's just a lot of these factors in life. And, and then I will say, too, on the money side of it. I found that playing with orchestras for the first time in a while, it was really great. But I basically broke even between actually having to purchase tails and shirts and ended up refitting some of my pants and shirts because I just didn't want to think about it and worry about it. And the biggest stress actually for me with the orchestral gigs this fall was what I was supposed to be wearing. Now this podcast is turning into this, but <laughs> this is the added stress, you know, having to go to Boston to get tails from a used store, but ended up still spending $600 on them, and that was about $150 or $200 more than what I was paid to play with the orchestra. And I'm not complaining because it's an investment, and I'm excited to do that, and I'll need them, and it helped with some other things and other orchestral gigs. But all to say that it's an investment, but it's going to take another season or another semester to start to like see the benefits of it. And just all that is stressful. It just, it just is. It's okay. It's part of the job, but it is stressful. It's not just like, you know what you're getting into. You've done it before and blah, blah, blah. It's like starting a new job, working with a new team, working with a new ensemble. It feels like more is on the line than if you were five years in or three years in even. So it's exciting, but many different experiences. There were solo shows, you know, promoting. I was working multiple jobs. Uh, not, I don't talk about it a lot, but so I I'm head of music at the Cultural Center of Cape Cod, run the children's program for Shelter Music Boston, and I am the hand drum, sort of group hand drum teacher at the Epiphany School in Dorchester, and I do all those weekly. And I think there's some other, yeah, I, I mean, I, I run my own business, basically my own music, and do many other things, and many different things kind of come up, um, many of which I don't even remember if you were to ask me because they happened and then they stopped, <laughs> or things like that constantly freelancing and taking, you know, whatever I can, I can feasibly do. I'm in a big mode right now of raising money internally so that I can put out this album the way that I want to uh, in 2023. And it just led to a huge, all this sounds kind of crazy, but essentially it all led to a huge bottlenecking. I didn't really realize how crazy, I knew it was crazy, but I didn't know the way I really felt 
because I wasn't able to really stop and feel it. I stopped meditating and all these things. I eventually, of course, when it starts to get dark out in the East Coast, you stop exercising. It's harder to, even if you're ready, you know, for the season to, for that to happen. It's still hard to get out when the sun's going down at, you know, before 3 p.m. But I'll say it wasn't until Christmas that I had a day truly off and kind of the day before a little bit. And I kept trying to shut things down. I thought, oh, the week before Christmas is going to be really relaxed. And then it kind of pushed. I was taking calls, setting up calls, doing a lot of booking to set up things for this album release. And there's just a huge thing behind it, which we'll go into more. But I wasn't really able to shut things down until like Christmas Eve or so. And once I did, it just, I couldn't believe how good it felt to just lie in bed and just to sit under the covers, be with my my partner, my girlfriend, and just stop. Like I just really wanted everything to stop and you know I just I just did that you know I did that kind of on my own too it's nice when the whole industry shuts down but I just really I mean I'll just say it a lot this time you know I just really needed things to stop both something that you know just me kind of putting the boundary up but also the the things around me of course this is you know like many of us you know, we can kind of moan and groan about some things, but it's everything that we built ourselves. And, and I'm happy and super grateful for all the work, uh, which is part of the difficultness is when you're a musician or working the arts, you're just, for me, it's a big story about being in my 20s. And the story of my 20s, I just turned 30 in June. The story of my 20s was take everything, don't say no. And I got a little better, you know, no. And as I got into my late, late 20s, but it's just been yes, yes, yes. I can't even really imagine saying no to something or trying to figure out, you know, and trying to negotiate to make it work for me or things. I'm really always looking at all the opportunities. And that did amazing things for me through my 20s and set me up in a way. But I feel like the story of my 30s is going to be no. It's going to be learning how to say no, when to say no. And even like the, the, maybe the like stages of no. I think I'm very good at giving people even a chance. Like people don't really understand how many meetings I take with people, how many meetings I set up and how much I'm just constantly networking, talking to people and all this stuff. But, you know, now I'm in a situation where people are approaching me more. They want me involved more. It's partially because of where I live and the we'll call economics of where I live. But I really, I'm seeing more now that I should not even, some things I should just say no very early on to just stop it cold because I can let these conversations go on with these people, which I know that. And then you find out when you're in person that, oh, there's no budget. And I could have figured that out from the beginning. That's been something I've been learning more and more. And and then there's kind of saying no throughout the stage of, oh, there is a budget, but it's not my rate. And what is my rate? And what do I really need? And I found myself saying this fall all the way up until Christmas, like the second story for me of this of the fall was I got to raise my rate. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And I struggle with it because I still there's so many different kinds of gigs. There's so many different reasons to perform and take gigs. I definitely struggle with some of that, even though I can be very good at pushing rates up. Um, there's certain situations where I'm not. And there were plenty where I was like, even if I asked for three hundred dollars, once I did the gig and like was in the midst of it, I was like, I should have charged double of this. And so I'm really trying to figure out how to really think about intentionally setting up front like this is what I need. And then even if they work back from there, it's still going to be higher than if I started at a different number. You just need more to live now. It, it takes more. There's And the type of kind of world that I'm in, I it just, it just need more. And it, it's for my end, it's a lot of moving a vibraphone around or moving equipment around or driving or maybe there's an ad of rehearsal, but it just is kind of not enough for if it takes eff- extra effort or there's not a big payoff. You just got to charge. You got to charge more. I think actually probably a lot of musicians are kind of feeling similarly and they're probably already doing this. I mean, I see it because I've tried to hire people for my gigs and I see people saying no. I see I see it all on the other side and I see how good string players, (laughs) that's my reference, how good string players are at saying no and holding their standards on some things. And sometimes I wish I could do that with my instrument more. But to get back fully on track, I'd like to talk about resting, (laughs) relaxing, and reviving and what that kind of means for me and maybe for you. For me, I think of myself as someone who takes time for themselves, which sounds insane because that's not really true. But in my head, 
I'm delusional and I think that I do. But like I said, it wasn't until I really shut things down around Christmas that I realized how much I needed rest and how much I need to prioritize rest. Not the kind of rest of like, oh, I'm going to make tea or, oh, I'm going to even meditate for 10 minutes, though those things are really helpful and realistic. But what I realized for me was I need a day where or serious hours where there's just nothing and I'm not worried about anything. And that's, I guess, unrealistic in a lot of ways, especially as you get older. But that's the kind of rest that I I think I'm going to try to build into my life. And that probably will mean making less money almost surely, but it will mean I'll have hopefully more sanity. I definitely noticed this fall I was starting to get really forgetful about names or conversations or but I don't really want to show up like that and if there comes a time where I have to be like that again I so be it but if I have a a point in my life now where I can start to choose I'm looking to do that not excited about it but I'm excited about the idea of being able to have that feeling that I had over the holidays where I could just lay in bed and I didn't have to go anywhere and I didn't have to do anything and all I had to do was just be in the moment and enjoy that and just have a a real weekend. I recently saw a friend down in the Southwest who's very successful and really awesome person, does so much great work. And I was like, do you work seven days a week? Because I work seven days a week. And she's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I work seven days a week. Like, yeah, that's what I thought. And I think as a musician, you get so used to that. Like that's just kind of what is expected. And maybe we rationalize it because, oh, on Mondays it's slow while everyone else is working harder. Oh, we don't really often get going for some things until like 10 or 11 or noon or it's night gigs. So, oh, you have your day and then you work at night, but you work each night, but you know, oh, you have your days. But I think that real long sustained suspended time to relax is something that I think is important. (laughs) And It's something that I'm also trying to convince myself is important because I know that I'm saying that, but I'm not doing it at all. And it's weird for me internally because I know that I actually do really care about it and I do want to prioritize it, but it's, I struggle to actually prioritize that over dollars, over being able to put away money, being able to save and do this project, being able to do this project and not have to think about the money is also a type of freedom and a a type of sort of rest and relax to me. But I think there's this level of like actually having a weekend or actually having a weekend day. And it's hard because even if you have a Monday totally off and there's a nice part of that while everyone else is working, most of the time other people are working. And if you work in admin jobs, they're working. And so they're sending stuff to you or all of a sudden they have a fire that, you know, supposedly you need to put out or whatever it is. But I'm interested in now maybe having the luxury to try to figure out how I can chase that feeling that I had. And I'll also say in relation to all this is that I really love working hard because I love the feeling of when you do get to rest and you really savor it, which is what I've been saying. But I'd like to, (laughs) I like to have that balanced more. I really find like the favorite times I've ever had beer are after stints of like maybe not having it for a while and like, or any sort of carbonated thing or or any kind of food or chocolate or whatever like and I think that's kind of a it's there's a lot of studies in biology around this too but for me it's a really gratifying thing to work hard and really kind of earn your rest we all deserve rest all the time and theoretically we all probably shouldn't work and all this stuff and we you know all these things but that's not the reality that we live in yet but I really do like that kind of ecosystem of working hard and then having rest But I think the thing that I'm talking about is actually to build in that rest and schedule it more frequently than like once a year, (laughs) you know, and sometimes I find traveling, I mean, I don't, I mean, many musicians might be thinking about this too right now. You're kind of thinking of the new year and your schedule and stuff. I find that, you know, going to Puerto Rico or going on a trip can be a real, like getting away from my house, getting away from my studio or my drums can be really helpful because then I can just focus on. Sometimes it's just computer work, like booking or something. But sometimes getting out of my routine is the best way to get that kind of rest. So if that's a tip for some people, I'm sure many people have figured that out or figured that out already. But sometimes I do think about just booking an Airbnb 45 minutes away or 30 minutes away. You know, even on near where I live now, that can be a real way to to like stop everything and like get some true rest. 
So I think I'm kind of getting into the moving into the reviving a little bit here too. I've been thinking about how to revive myself. I think right before this kind of break we've had, I was really feeling the kind of burnout, finding things that previously brought me joy really weren't. And I'm kind of doing a lot of introspection, reflection, a lot of talking to my partner about that and thinking a lot about it and finally getting the space to process more about it and getting the space to be more honest with myself about it. And that's been really, really helpful. And as I imagine what it's like to have less things in my life, I feel better, I think. But I still have that worry about money, which is kind of always a worry, but that's a whole whole thing. But, you know, taking a chance on myself, taking a chance on my relationships, taking a chance on really my time, being in a pivotal position where I just need more time to do the things. And it's with so when you spend two years in production for an album over two years, you know, you kind of are, and then you're looking at the release and you know more than you ever have before and you know the time it takes. And even if you didn't do anything, it wouldn't be enough time and all that. But when you're looking, staring down the barrel of that, you know, it becomes pretty clear. But it's difficult when you've built up all this stuff around you and you're trying to make decisions and there's relationships, you know, involved and people that you feel like you're going to let down and all this stuff. And so, it's a lot to consider, especially as an empath, especially as someone who struggles to let people down or or anything like that. Of course, most of the time, it's the best thing to put yourself first in every situation. But you know, as you get older, I don't know. I, I think I think being selfish and self help and self care sometimes is way too focused on an individual. And you know, we need to think about how the self runs in a community, runs in a greater community runs in relationships. And I think, I guess everything's about balance, but I think too much self anything is selfish or is, you know, not considering of others. So I I can kind of bend all the way there and I can also bend to a hyper uh, sense of self too. And so I'm trying to find that medium and trying to find that balance. And I guess the reality is just what I'm trying to remind myself is that to give myself space and know that I'm probably going to make a quote mistake in some of the decisions that I make. And there will also be things that I'll be so happy to be done with and to be moving on from and to not have to answer to on a week to week basis. So that's the reality. Again, this is very much me talking to myself. (laughs) But I do find getting as specific as I can at the moment about things that hopefully that's more relatable and that comes through this you know, little microphone that I have and is the most true to you. I'm pretty curious about what everyone else is going through. I tend to find when I'm kind of feeling this kind of energy about something that many other people are in that space. I think many people have been in this space for over a year, if not a year, definitely since the summer and Things were starting to shift, but I'm curious to hear how how you find rest, how you relax, how you revive yourself. I got to the point where even the things that really do revive me, like cooking, um, particularly, and look, you know, thinking about what's a new recipe that I could make and be exciting and different, and what flavors, you know, can I learn about, and just experiences of cooking could I have, and even that I was struggling to to feel excited about. I really was like, just shut it down, close the door. I need to go to like a deep place of of space. But it is always really encouraging and beautiful to find that it does work to not rush it. But I think what's I've been also thinking about with this is people who can't do that, probably people with kids, people who live with, you know, roommates that are not a good situation for them. It can be really hard and impossible. And so I don't know how those people get space. So I'm pretty I'm curious on how people find that space and rest, how they're able to revive. I imagine there's a lot of <laughs> A lot of Netflix binging. But I'm curious on how other millennial musicians you find rest and how you relax and revive. I, I have a lot of ideas and we talked about some things, but I'm I'm pretty curious to hear how people do this and if they find that around the holidays. I think many millennials are going to have a very different way of going about holidays than our parents. I think uh, what I find is with parents in my life that there's a lot of doing things because we should. There's a lot of respecting people or respecting some tradition. I think many millennials are trying to figure out what are my traditions. I think many of us are probably going to make our own. Trying to figure out what that is, I'm sure it's going to be messy in every kind of way. But honestly, whatever people do now is like 
a hundred million times worse. So I'm sure it can't be as bad as that. But I think we're trying to figure out how to exist with these holidays and these traditions, whether religious or this religious secular stuff. And, and then all of the trying to bring up the voices that have not been heard. And, you know, I saw this video of Biden and his Jill, you know, celebrating Kwanzaa in this video. And it's very hard not to see that as very performative, but I think it's, it is better than that not happening, but maybe it's not. I mean, who am I to say, but you know, I think there is a sense of opening it up to what all holidays are happening at this time. And throughout the year, people taking that space for that, different people taking space for that at different times. And I think most likely as the generations turn over and gosh, sometimes I just can't wait for that to happen. And I'm sure many millennials feel that way too. And, and especially people younger than me, you know, what is this world that we're going to make? What is this? How are we going to create relaxing time? I mean, I think these holidays were made, these Hallmark holidays were made, you know, for rest from these crazy work weeks that were created for us. You know, as we get into points of position of leadership and all this stuff more and more, I'm excited to see what that turns into. I have an inkling of that, what that might be. I'm sure there'll be a lot of division about it. I think at the core of it, these things are just about being with family. But I think for millennials more than ever, found family is more of a thing. That could be for a variety of different reasons or where you feel comfortable, where you feel that is different. And I think it really is just a broader spectrum than ever. I think probably more millennials are going to take that time for themselves as opposed to put themselves in situations that they don't actually want to be in and that they're not happy in it. The people they're around are not happy in it. And just being like, I'm done with this. This isn't this isn't worth anyone's time. And I think there's going to be a complicated relationship with it that every individual has a different relationship with, whether they stop doing something for a few years and then they realize they miss it or I don't know. I mean, I'm curious to see if in the end it's like, oh, actually, no, everyone has the same needs at the end of the day. It's like, but that's there's no way that's true. But in the back of my head, there's a little voice saying like, oh, you can go through this. You can be rebellious. And then at the end of the day, guess what? The older people were right. And I'm sure they will be more right than I would have thought, but I think there will be something new that's made from that. And I'm curious to see what those things are. This time of going through the motions of of the holiday season for the, you know, everyone else but yourself is a time I think I'm reflective and I'm in a more confident position to think, how do I feel in these situations? I think as like an artist and a musician, you're just very self-aware. I feel these things in my body. I feel them in my spirit. And the reality is when you get on stage and you're there to be someone who inspires people, whether that's like an overt thing or not, your time off is so important. Your time to revive is really important because you're going to people. When I perform, I'm performing for people who are on break. They're there to relax, but I'm there to perform. And so there's this inverse relationship. And I find that that inverse relationship is not just there. Like, you know, on weekends, that's when many musicians perform. That's when normal people are off and they're going to a performance to hopefully relax, be inspired. So how do we find our time to do that? But when you're working in this hyper-capitalist society and all this stuff, you're working off in seven days a week or you're just constantly working or you're you're less than expectations and maybe you have some self-criticism going on that's pretty deep and exhausting too. So it's a, it's a real dance and it's really something that for me becomes highlighted in the holidays but it's a weekly, daily situation I'm trying to figure it out. So I've rambled for a bit here and the kitty cat next to me who was listening to me talk has started to walk away because I think even he's bored. No. <laughs> uh, it's great to share these things. It's great to start doing these solo podcasts. I hope not to overshare. I hope not to undershare and share more about the behind the scenes and more of me and more of my lens on things and excited to have more guests on who are just blow me away and are super inspiring and as much work as this podcast does take i'm excited to take some actions to get more efficient at it some of that comes with buying some microphones like a usb mic that i don't have yet but that'll make it easy to just plug in also i can travel with and i don't you know the barrier to entry will go down to investing in some extra time uh to learn some editing shortcuts and things to make some of the editing even quicker. And also, as I've said before, and we'll say again, you know, just not being as perfectionist about the editing, really letting it run, um, taking out what I can, but 
not being as picky as I used to be when I started the podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's great to talk with you and have you listen. The fans of the show are really great people. I love to hear from you. Please feel free to reach out. If you have any topics you'd like to hear me specifically talk about or covered in any of the podcasts, would be happy to do that. My current goal is to have one interview come out per month and one solo podcast per, mo- per month distance between about two weeks i'll try to be as consistent as i can but as i said there's uh, a lot going on behind the scenes it's just a big balance but i appreciate your patience do go back and listen to previous episodes i think a lot of them are still very relevant they're really audio graphical biopics of each musician and excited to talk more about why this podcast exists where it comes from my, my upbringing and all these things so stay tuned for more and hope you have a great holiday season with yourself and the people that you love and around you And remember to support live music whenever, wherever, and however you can. See you next episode.